couple months back, I ran a video about how to prep a fence or deck for stain. And of course, there's no point in prepping a fence if you aren't actually going to stain it. So that's what I'm talking about in today's video. To do this, I teamed up once again with Nick O'Keefe of Oak City Coatings in Raleigh, North Carolina. A true paint expert, Nick had a ton of insights into things you should know and things you should avoid during the staining process. And we're sharing those tips with you next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So to start out, I'll mention that nearly every pro, like Nick, uses a sprayer to apply stain to a fence. It works much faster and keeps costs lower, which every customer wants. In the future, we'll probably talk about sprayer use in detail. It can get complex. But the important thing to know is that you don't need a sprayer to stain a fence. You can do the whole thing with a brush, even if it's more tiring. And even if you do use a sprayer, it's absolutely essential that you bring a brush into the process for reasons that we'll show. The other thing to know is that Nick is using an oil-based stain and sealant product. He does prefer oil-based stains for fences because they penetrate more. This means that oil-based stains provide better durability. Fence lumber drinks it up, which is exactly what you want. Water-based stain has a wider range of colors and easier cleanup, but it doesn't soak into wood as well, which makes it harder to get a good finish. Also, it's prone to peeling if misapplied, so many pros don't use it. They go with oil-based for better penetration. And finally, no matter what product or application method you use, you absolutely need to read the back of the can. Each company and product will have preferred application methods. You need to use these for reasons we're about to discuss. With that said, here's where most people go wrong with their fence staining. Mistake number one, undersaturating. One of the biggest mistakes that DIYers make is that they don't apply enough stain to their fence. Whether they're using a sprayer or a brush, they move too quickly and apply too thin of a coat. Nick says that many people try to stain at the speed with which they roll paint, and it just doesn't work that way. Again, oil-based stains are a penetrating agent. As such, in order to get them to sink into the wood, you need to saturate to the point of rejection. You essentially want to load so much stain onto the fence that it can't all soak in and starts to run down in spots. Just look at this earlier section where we made fast passes with our semi-transparent stain and sprayer. It looks light and reddish, but look at later panels where we really loaded up the fence boards. They're dark, almost red-brown. These latter panels were really done with the appropriate application. Really slowing down the spraying process or laying on with a fully loaded brush is the way to go. This is because wood will continue to drink in stain after it's been applied, especially if you did our pre-stain wash, which is essential for prepping the wood. So if you do too light of a coat, you're basically going to leave wood dry which will leave it unprotected. That's not what we want. So saturate to the point of rejection. And you might say, but the drips are gonna look terrible. And they would look terrible if you made our second mistake, failure to back brush. As I said, even if you use a sprayer, you still need to bring a brush into play because really the sprayer is just the means to get a lot of material onto the fence quickly. But every panel that Nick's crew sprays, they also back brush with a four inch natural bristle brush. Since we're loading to the saturation point, the brush strokes are necessary to move excess material around. They even out the stain layer. And they also drive stain deeper into the wood. It's a lot like sunscreen. You can spray it on, but you really need to rub it in too if you want to block out UV. This is an absolute must. And you have to use a natural bristle brush like this one because synthetic bristles won't work as well for oil-based stain. We did a whole video on that difference too, so be sure to check that out. Now, some people might think, well, if I did too light of a coat the first time, I can always throw another one on later. But this gets people into trouble with mistake number three, recoating at the wrong time. Stain is actually very forgiving. You can do a section and say, eh, that looks a little light, and then add another. But you have to do it at the right time, or it'll probably fail. And this really comes down to the product that you're using. If you're using a transparent or semi-transparent stain, you'll usually need to recoat right away. This is because many transparent stains require that you do a wet-on-wet wet application. In other words, if you're going to do an extra coat, you need to do it while the first coat is still wet, long before it dries. This is because many stains are what we call non-film forming. They don't work like paint, which dries and develops a kind of skin, and that skin becomes a good surface for the next coat. With transparent and semi-transparent stain, the first coat won't act as a good binder for the second coat because it doesn't form a film. It'll essentially reject the next coat the same way that you want it to reject other pollutants. And the end result is that your second layer will peel. You don't want that. 
So if you're gonna add more, add it while the first coat is still wet for transparent and semi-transparent stains. Fortunately, many stains are slow drying, so you have some working time, possibly a couple hours, but you don't wanna push it. You may wanna stain your fence in sections so you can address problem areas quickly. Now, the exception to this is solid stains, which are a good option for older fences where the appearance of the wood has degraded. Solid stains function more like a paint, which means that they generally are film forming. So you'll actually wanna let them dry, usually at least two to four hours, and then reapply. And really, this is all just another reason that you really wanna read your can and understand your product before you reapply. And when it comes to overall appearance, you wanna be wary of mistake number four, expecting perfect uniformity. Some people think that their stain application has failed because they may have slight color variations throughout the fence. But in reality, this is often a natural part of stain application. Fence lumber is variegated. It comes from a lot of different sources, different trees, and different parts of the tree. Also, much fence lumber tends to be a little more rough sawn than other types of lumber. The result is that board to board, you're gonna have extremely different wood density, porosity, and texture. There's really no way to keep these lumbers perfectly uniform, certainly not in the amounts that fence building requires. As a result, the stain is gonna interact differently with each board, and it can even vary across parts of the same board. For instance, knots can grossly affect stain pigmentation. Also, heartwood will stain differently than sapwood. Those are the layers closer to the bark. This means that you're gonna have some variety in board appearance almost no matter what you do, especially between framing lumber and the actual fence pickets. Framing lumber is thicker, denser, and takes up stain very slowly, whereas picket lumber tends to be very light and porous and will drink stain quickly. But really, this isn't such a bad thing. Just compare it to hardwood floors. Every house and every room has a wide variety of appearances in hardwoods, but it's part of the character. You're pulling out the natural beauty of the wood that way. If you really want a lot of uniformity in your fence appearance, then you'll probably want to opt for a solid stain. These function a bit more like paint in terms of opacity. And again, even if you're using a transparent or a semi-transparent stain, you can achieve greater regularity by pre-treating the fence with a chemical bath. It'll remove a lot of pollutants and open the grain layers so they drink more stain. It's a huge benefit. In later videos, we'll talk about deck staining as well. But it's a different process because decks get walked on, don't dry as fast, and take more of a beating. So they need their own video. But that's it for this video on fence staining. I'd like to thank Nick and the Oak City Coatings crew for helping me with this one. Nick's company is one of the best in the greater NC Triangle area, and if you need paint or stain work done on your home around Raleigh and Cary, then be sure to check out their contacts below. I'll also try to link any tools seen in this video or others that might help down in the description, so feel free to check out those links as well. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.